everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new tutorial. And we're going to be looking at five different fun ways that we can use stenciling to create some amazing effects on your cards. So let's jump right in. My first technique is going to be showing you how to create this really cool rainbow that I used embossing paste and distress ink reinkers to color the embossing paste. So I've got a few distress ink reinkers here on my desk. And I'm going to start dripping those reinkers onto a slick surface to be able to mix the embossing paste with that ink. And that's going to allow me to color that embossing paste, which happens to be from Wendy Vecchi and Dreamweaver. I'm applying that paste down through this stencil, which is from Stencil Girl. This is the little painted rainbow. And it is so pretty. I love the painted texture of the stencil. I'm applying the paste down through that stencil, making sure to stay within each brush stroke because there are brush stroke stripes, as you can see here, through this stencil. So as I'm applying the paste, I'm making sure to keep the colors fairly separated, though I will allow them to overlap a little bit here and there, like you see me doing with the pink and the yellow. I'm not smoothing the texture paste out a whole lot because I want there to be quite a bit of dimension. So as you can see, this paste is quite lumpy and that was the look I was going for. I wanted there to be texture and I didn't want it to be super smooth. You will want to clean that stencil off really well before you go ahead and do anything else. Once my paste was dry, I took some watercolors. These were Prima Watercolor Confections paints and I'm adding these over top of the stenciling. And because watercolors are translucent, you're still gonna see the beautiful color that we had from that embossed rainbow. We also get that awesome texture from that embossing paste. But this is enhancing that painted effect that the stenciling created. And you can see we get a beautiful, vibrant result. I love using embossing paste because it gives me such great dimension after it's dried. Okay, next technique, we're going to look at creating a ghosted masked sentiment inside of your stenciling. So I've got a couple of letter dies here and I'm going to cut these from some masking paper which I do have attached to a piece of plastic just so it doesn't stick to my cutting plates. After I've ran those letters through my die cutting machine, I'm going to put them down onto a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. These letter dies happen to be from Altenew and the stencil I'm using is from Neat and Tangled. I'm going to attach this stencil down onto my paper to make sure it doesn't go anywhere but I'm only attaching it to the top and you'll see why in just a second. I'm doing the stenciling with Distress Oxide inks, but you can use any inks that you prefer to do the ink blending. I just happen to like the really creamy, vibrant results of the oxides. I'm creating a little bit of a halo around the sentiment using a slightly lighter shade of blue. I'm using peacock feathers for the center, and then I've got some salty ocean on the edges. I'm going to remove those masks, and as you can see, we have these beautiful crisp white letters now onto the paper, and it's not covered with that stenciled ink blending that we did. I'm going to reapply that stencil back over top and you can see this is why we have it taped to the top. And then I'll ink blend over top of that stencil again with the lighter shade and you can see we get this amazing result. Now I want to step this up a little bit. You can leave it just as it is, but I like adding a little bit of dimension and I think this also enhances the look a bit more. But I'm taking those same letter dies and I'm cutting those letters out now from that panel. What this is doing is this is allowing me to then take those letter dies and I'll be able to pop them up off of my card. This is gonna let that ghosted stenciling effect stand out even more. Here's that ghosted effect, and you can see how stunning this is and how much fun it is to create a really cool ghosted stenciling effect. Now, spray inks are a fun yet messy medium that are awesome for creating some beautiful stenciling designs. I've got a few distinctly dilutionals sprays, and I'm going to be spritzing these through a Cartabella stencil of this beautiful floral design. I'm making sure to give a pretty good coverage of that spray so that way there are no areas that are not covered. I'll lift this up and you can see that it looks a little bit splotchy at first, but once this dries, the results will be beautiful and quite smooth. Here you can see that stenciling as it's dry. And then I also wanted to show you another way that you can do some fun effects with the spray inks. Spray inks, you can see you can get a really nice clean result like we just did. However, you can get something a little bit more artsy if you go a little bit crazy. So here I'm going to take some more sprays. I'm going to spritz these down onto the stencil, making sure I get a lot of spray on there. Then I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to smush that stencil and the spray ink onto the piece of paper that's underneath 
but then it's also transferring to the other piece of paper. And now we have two designs that you can then add additional embellishing to. This creates a very funky, messy appearance, but I'm gonna show you how you can now take that stencil and overlay it back over top of where it was originally and do some ink blending on the areas that are white or in some cases, some of it is covered with some of the ink that was smooshed through there. That's creating a very artsy effect. After I did the ink blending, I'm going to enhance that stenciling that we just did with the ink blending. I'm going to apply embossing paste. This is translucent embossing paste over top of that ink blending that we did. Now this is creating a dimensional effect over the ink blending. And we have now the ink blending over top of the smushed design, which is a very artsy and very unique effect. And you can see it's a very tone on tone style because we use very similar colors for the ink blending. You could use different colors for the ink blending and get a very different result. Now, another fun thing to do with stencils is to color with them. Now, if you're feeling more tedious, you could go ahead and trace your stencil and then color inside the lines. I like to do something a little bit more artsy. So I'm taking some Tonic Studios Aquaflow pens and I'm painting inside the negative areas of the stencil. Now this is the Altenew Layer Dahlia stencil. And so there is going to be a second layer that I will add over top of this using the darkest colors of the same markers that I'm using here. But what I'm doing is I'm making sure to use a medium that is wet so I can blend, but it's not too wet that such as if you were using watercolors and some actual water, you would have the chance of things seeping through underneath of the stencil. And we don't really want that because that's going to be too messy, unless that's a look you're really going for. But here I've added that second layer over top of that stencil design and we get a really vibrant effect with these markers. I'm also fixing up some areas where the stenciling wasn't perfect. You can go ahead back in and reapply some color and fix up any lines that might need adjusted. The result is a beautiful, vibrant art deco style and I really loved how this one turned out. Okay, one more technique and this is stenciling to create a candle holder. Now luminaries are so beautiful and one of my favorite things because I love lights. So I thought this would be really fun. I'm going to show you how to make this. This is a piece of acetate. You can use any sort of clear packaging or plastic, something that's pretty sturdy. I've cut this down to be about five and a half inches long by somewhere around three inches tall-ish. I have attached a stencil down, the same one that I was using earlier from Neat and Tangled, and I'm putting some glimmer paste over top of this from Tonic Studios. After I added the glimmer paste and I let it dry, this is the end result. You can see this beautiful sh glittery sheen on the acetate and you can see through this obviously because this is how we're going to create that little candle holder. I put a piece of double sided adhesive on the end of that panel. Then I'm going to take my battery tea light. I'm going to wrap this around just to make sure I get the spacing just right. I also took a circle die from Simon Says Stamp. This is about two inches round and I'm going to cut eight slits inside of it so that way I can fold the little tabs up and this is going to create a little circle base for my little candle holder. I'll fold those up, put some adhesive along the ends and then I'll fit this inside of my candle holder and this will be the base that will hold the tea light inside. Now I'm using a battery operated tea light because it's just a safer option. You can, of course, use a real candle, but you will want to leave some room around your candle if you're going to do that. So I ended up making mine really small because I like the small, delicate feel of it. And I also like that it fits around that tea light perfectly. But if you want to make something bigger, just make the acetate panel bigger. But here you can see the effect and it is so cool. And I love how it creates a beautiful glittery effect with that glimmer paste from Tonic Studios. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can do stenciling and I hope that you have been inspired today to do some of your own. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more inspiration. I will see you again very soon with another video and until then, thanks for watching.